Hey everybody, Chris Farad here. Welcome back to The Witcher 2. As you can see, I came back to the caves. And apparently I missed out on a sword. And I had to come and check it out, and here it is. It's called the Dancer. Better be good. It better be good. Let's check it out. Uh, steel sword. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Bleeding plus 30. Uh, vitality regen, adrenaline. Blade oils, though, and instant kill down. Uh, but the other one's only improved because of the Yggsith rune. Uh, pretty good, actually. I think this is the way to go because with the runes that I put on it, uh, specifically the Yggsith runes, or Isgith. I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time. Isgith. Yisgith? I'm not sure how it's actually pronounced, but I've been reversing the things. Anyways, I'm going to grab it, and then I'll make some decisions when I actually get time to make some runes. And, yeah. The other thing I'm going to do is head back to the scribes area and pick up a note that I missed, and then uh, we'll carry on. Thanks. Okay, and this is the note that I had missed. And when I had watched back my footage, I had realized uh, that this big shiny Comments. thing was happening over here, and I never grabbed it. It was irritating me. So here it is, Aryan Lavalette Interrogation Report. This actually looks kind of interesting. Upon completing the initial procedures, we began the interrogation proper. Aryan Lavalette was informed of the tools which would be used. His answer, being vulgar and unworthy of a highborn man, was not recorded. Then the unkind master began to brand him with a hot iron. I proceeded to take him my Lord Baron's questions, or ask him, sorry. Unfortunately, I came upon a wall of resistance, and the subject's answers were full of filth that shed no light on the issues at hand. The unkind master then reached for another tool, and after it was applied, I began to ask my Lord Baron's questions anew. That's not good. That's really unfortunate, actually. Okay, so now we have a couple of things we need to do. Uh, we need to talk to Count Maravel, we have to meet with Aldrich, and we have to find out what happened to Boosie and Anias. So talk to Natalis. Now, it's tough. Like, I'm not sure. Geralt needed to prove that the letter ordering Boosie's convoy to change course had been forged. Needless to say, Baron Kimbolt was immensely pleased, for he has he was no longer suspected of being responsible for the disappearance of Full Test Bastard. The Baron, a sly fox, where politics were concerned, counterattacked immediately, providing our hero with a new lead. The Witcher was to intercept Count Merrivale's messenger and strip him of whatever scrolls he was carrying. As Kimbolt told it, any letter would prove that its author was an Guardian collaborator and thus a traitor to Temeria, and this traitor could very well have orchestrated Boosie's disappearance. Thus encouraged, Geralt directed his steps towards the fountain in Lochmuin Central Square where he was to meet Aldrich, one of Baron Kimbolt's spies. Okay, and then we need to talk to Maravel, and this came up just as I was heading back to the caves to get the sword. Somebody, some random guy stopped and said, uh, Maravel really wants to see you, and I was like, he can wait. That, that's all that happened. As our hero was delving into the mystery of the bastard's disappearance, he received a message from a man who could very w well shed some light on the case. Count Maravel, a nobleman almost as influential as Baron Kimball, has dispatched a messenger to invite Geralt for a chat. As members of the Council of Regents, both Kimbolt and Merivale had been equally responsible for Boosie and Anias after Full Test death. Thus, talking to the Count could prove worthwhile. Let's go to the messenger first. Calling me sauce. Nah, I'm clear of mind, like a. And let's see what we can find out. Aldrich, Baron Kimbolt said you'd point Hieronymus Lash out to me. Perfect timing. Come with me. Hmm. You're not very chatty, Aldrich, unfortunately. Where's Lash? Patience, mate. They should be here any minute. Look, that I've done my bit. Up to you now. Well, how am I supposed to get that? We've got a tail. Stop him. 
stop there, white one. What if I don't? Then I'll fucking help you! I'd like to see you try. Consider it done! Whoa! For <laughs> Natalis! <laughs> 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 Where'd he go? This isn't good. That's the one. Kill him. Holy, this guy's got power. For all these guys to listen to him? Oh, sick. Threesome! Awesome. <laughs> oh my god, am I powerful. I love it. I want to get to him before he gets to Maravel. Preferably. Enough! You shall die. Here and now. Oh yeah. Great. Uh, what? the hell? Oh, I see how it is. Oh, shit. What is going on with this guy? Whoa! I can't even get close to him. Uh, does he go into the same spots over and over? I have an idea. Blue spot. He also came in here, I think. He also came over here. Come here. Yeah. There! There he is! Oh, no! God damn it! Quen. Whoa! Alright. Man down. That was actually kind of cool. Ah, oh, Jesus. Alright. Count Maravel's correspondence. Oh, he had a magnifying glass. You know what that means. He's a conspirator. And the Clar. Is that some type of trap, maybe? Sounds like it. Yeah, trap wounds and causes bleeding. That's cool. Um, okay. Your Excellency. This is to Schillard Fitzosterlin. This guy. I'm happy to report that Anais, Foltest's bastard daughter, has been handed over to the Kedwenis in your excellency's name as per our agreement. The girl is now under the sorcerer Deathmold's care, which we saw a while ago, and he appeared to be more than pleased with the gift. I trust that since I have concluded my end of the matter, I can now expect swift closure thereof on your excellency's part. Sadly, not all went as planned. Full test bastard son Boosie perished, oh, through a series of unfortunate coincidences. Yet when dealing with such complex situations rife with unforeseen circumstances, one must be prepared to risk certain losses. I mourn for the lad. Yet I trust your excellency will see the advantages of this turn of events. Besides, can one really expect to cheat fate? Okay, Maribel. Let's have a little chat, shall we? I think we shall. Whoa, what the hell? That was weird. Now, I can go talk to Natalis, or I can talk to Maravel, and let's see what he has to say. I bet he's gonna try to BS me. And then I'd be like, it's the letter. Now, Maravel, he is the... He is like the fancy pants guy, I think. 
The guy with the cats. It's you. Okay. <laughs> Just straight up. Does the name Brigida Papabrock ring any bells? Oh, rings bells, sets off whistles. Why? I believe my loins have grown warm. Touch my plums, touch my plums. <laughs> I don't like it. Excuse him. me. Fruit Witcher, especially fruit of the south. Tender, juicy, soft on the exterior. That's what I think of when you mention Dame Brigida. The woman is positively obsessed. I was hoping for a straighter answer. A man of your experience surely understands what I mean. Hmm. So you admit you know her well? I know her, I have known her, and I expect I yet will, and I'm not alone in that. Though, mind you, I admire the woman. Her kind of ambition is rare, among both genders. Ever taken advantage of that? Ever asked her to run errands for you? One must be careful with the ambitious. They are almost always running their own errands. Asking them to do yours simply invites them to use you. Baron Kimbolt learned that the hard way. But why ask me about the lass, here and now of all times and places? Surely, given your close allegiance and, no doubt, many a shared drinking binge, Commander Roach has told you all. Hmm. Brigida used Baron Kimbolt? Continues to, I surmise. To what end? You cannot expect me to answer every little query that pops into your mind, Witcher. Commander Roach can be strangely discreet. What do you know? I'm hardly one to tell another man's secrets. Indulge me. Ugh. If you must know, the rascal Roach rogered our dear Brigida, just before he passed her off onto me, among others, with a purpose in mind, I suspect. He'll be interested to hear what you had to say. My, my, aren't we dutiful? <laughs> oh, I don't like when he talks to me like that. What's so urgent, Count? Oh, etiquette is not your enemy, Witcher. It would not hurt you to embrace it at times. In any case, I could not help noticing you circulating in and out of Baron Kimbolt's quarters. Yet I wonder if you are fully aware of the kind of man you serve. What do you mean? He cuts a fine figure, doesn't he? The heavy cloak, the silver mane, the booming voice. Yet our worthy Baron is hardly the saint he makes himself out to be. A lot of that going around recently. I am in possession of certain information that might interest you. Spill it, Plums. And you want to share it because... We come from different worlds, Witcher. On the surface, we are as unlike as wraiths and wyverns. Yet, no matter our preferences, culinary, political, erotic, ultimately, we both are interested in and tirelessly seek one and the same thing, the truth. You can talk, Count. I'll grant you that. But I'm not convinced you can be trusted. Baron Kimbold also offered me the chance to learn a certain truth. I don't think I need to say who about. And you are certain that Kimbold can be trusted? So far, all the Baron's words have proved true. Well, then I merely ask that you verify mine. You are not the sole person to have repeatedly visited our kind-hearted Baron recently. Doesn't seem strange to me, given the time and the place. He has also had some more troublesome callers, blackmailers to be specific. Now, I'm not handing down any verdicts. Perhaps the Baron has some personal problems, in which case I would very much like to help him. Get to the point, Count. My people have learned where these blackmailers are encamped. I assume Baron Kimbolt has not been sitting on his hands and has also dispatched his huntsman to find them. A horrible man. I know who you mean. Ran into him in Kimbolt's quarters. Then you must also know that if you do not make haste, nothing will be left of our blackmailers, save some rotting corpses. I shall show you where they have their camp, and I merely ask that you learn what is at issue. Naturally, you can count on my gratitude, though we both know that is not the greatest reward. I can't promise you anything, Count, but I'll think about it. Farewell. Goddamn politics. Wow, okay. 
Well, before we get all accusatory on anybody, let's go and figure out if there's anything else going on. Witcher. Oh, actually, we need to head back in. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking I want to kind of extract as much information from these guys as I can. And then I'll go and probably just maybe rat them out to, uh... Uh, what's his name? Natalis. He's the one I really trust. I don't know if that's going to be an option, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. He wants to know all about these guys anyway, so. Now, we have our two new swords, which is great. The Dancer and uh, Adandith. So once, th once this is fully upgraded, it's going to be much better than the current silver sword that I have. But I need to get some Fire Runes. I have two. And some Iskith Runes. Which I've been saying wrong the whole time. Saying Igsith, but I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right still. But I know I've had the two letters <laughs> swapped for a majority of the time. Anyways, let's, um... I'm just trying to get through some stuff that I can maybe sell here that might be worth some money. Harpy feathers are... They bring a fair penny. Let's maybe sell, like, 17 of them. Neck or teeth, I can sell a few. Claws, sure. Brionia, let's sell a few of those. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do... ...is craft some runes here. I have one fire. Or two fire, so the I need one wolf. fire. I can't and believe it. three Ixith. Let me just check here. Adandith. Oh no, my steel sword's only gonna hold two, so I'm gonna get two fire runes. Or two, uh, Igsith. Iskith. <laughs> I can't even. I'll never be able to say it correctly. Alright. Oh, I need elemental stone. I wonder if I have any stored. Shatter your towers and crystal walls. It's a brazen attack. King Radovid will learn of this. Oh, yes, I do. Radovid, send them, you the idiot! The audacity! The Here's audacity! The okay. So, now, I have enough to make everything I need. So, two of these. And then, another fire rune. And I think we're good, actually. That's pretty fantastic because we're going to have some pretty badass swords now. Not that we don't already, but... So I'm going to go Steel Sword and then Adandith. And then I can sell these other two. But what I want to do is put my bleeding for the humans. And this was great advice that you guys had given me a long time ago. Uh, but I'm now implementing. And then, considering that fire is usually better against monsters, I'm gonna throw a bunch of fire onto the silver sword. There we go. 52 to 58, 63 to 71. The dancer. That is so sick. Oh, that's awesome. And my Vran armor's all maxed out. Like, things are... This is really great. Alright. Let's sell these other ones. Okay. Now, uh, blackmailers. Let's get going. Same him as the one that that stuns and freezes, I think. Somebody had mentioned a long time ago as well, there's this dead dwarf here. And uh, I just kind of ran by it at one point. I noticed him, but I didn't make any mention of it. Ooh, hello. Before the Baron's Huntsman disposes of them. What do you want? I saw you talking to Kimbolt. <laughs> I'm free to go where I please and talk to whoever I please. Couldn't agree more. Now you're here and you'll talk to me. I'm interested in the Baron. I've naught to say to you. Not good. 
because I need to know everything <laughs> you know about him. Uh-oh. Baron Kimbolt sends his regards. Oh, just what we needed. Leave us, Witcher. Since when does a Witcher take orders from a huntsman? Since that Witcher stopped hunting monsters and started poking his nose into others' affairs. Sometimes the stench is so strong you can't help but catch a whiff. Aye, well spoken. You've some common stinking thugs here, and I'm to teach them some humility. A ponce like you? Pucker up and kiss my arse, you fucking tulip! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ah. Uh. Well, I mean, I don't need to get between these two guys, do I? But I kind of want to find out more information. And I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do that. These folk have nothing to say to you, understand? I'll be the judge of that. Lend us a hand, Witcher. You'll not regret it. Got it. I'll need to know everything about Kimbold. God, this is shit! Enough of your jabbering! Kill them all! Okay, good. I'm okay with that. Sleep. Okay, now you guys owe me big Thanks, time. Witcher. We'd be corpses if not for you. Yeah, seems likely. Now don't make me regret helping you. You're welcome to all we know about Kimball. I'm all ears. We came here to collect our fee, me and me brothers, for a favor we did the Baron. What did you do for him? Spent four days in a forest, sitting on our asses. Baron Kimball wanted to pay you for that? Course not. We was to destroy some wagons in a caravan that was oh. to pass through Millville. Problem is, Caravan never came round. I can see why you're having trouble collecting. Kimbo had shy information. How is that our fault? That bugger lost us a right lot of time. And you know what they say, time is coin. What exactly were your orders? We was to watch the high road for a caravan carrying nobles. Two coloured wagons and a small escort. The wagons, they was ours. All inside was to perish. Any idea who was supposed to be in the wagons? Two high-born young'uns and their nannies. That's all the Baron told us. Willing to tell Natalis all this? I'm to fess up. They draw and quarter me. You didn't do anything. Took a job, that's it. They can't prove you actually wanted to complete it. If you refuse, Kimbold wins. He'll squirm his way out of this, but it won't end there. The Baron's got gold enough to hunt you till he hunts you down. Not lightly. I'll see them tear stripes off his back with hot pincers. All right. I'll talk to Natalis. Nice. The thing is, both of them, <laughs> both Kimbolt and uh, Maravell wanted to kill the two kids, but they went about it in different ways, which is really interesting. So now we're going to go talk to Natalis. We have all the information. <laughs> they kind of like, they kind of dicked each other over a bit, but we know the truth. The White Wolf! I can't believe it! I can't believe it! Oh, Jesus. Again. <laughs> uh, I always take these really weird ways and then end up going places I don't need to be going. Keeps things interesting. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. I, I kind of want to just accuse him, and I could have, but I think it makes more sense to just stay out of it and just present the facts. One day someone will get you in a dark alley. There's a traitor among the Temerians. 
Careful, Witcher. You'd better have evidence if you plan to accuse someone of treason. Busi and Anais. Yes? We are both. Count Marivelle outright betrayed Tamaria, while Baron Kimbold planned to murder Foltest's children. Those are serious charges. Kimbold hired some thugs to do the wet work for him. I found them, and one's ready to testify. They never got the job done because the convoy carrying the children changed course, only to fall into an ambush set by Marivelle. The Count wanted to hand Anais and Busi over to the Nilf Guardians. You'll find the proof in this letter. Busi's death was an accident. Dark clouds gather over Tamaria. I cannot arrest them both. Their contingents are among the largest in Loch Muin, and I cannot risk mutiny by their men. Thank you, Witcher. You did well to bring this matter to my attention. I only hope Baron Kimbolt will agree to stand with me. Oh, interesting. 